What is up, everybody? Pat here with Onward Up, uh, here at our Squamish office on a you know bit of a gray Tuesday afternoon. And um, yeah, I thought I'd just make a quick video on my bag setup, on what I would typically kind of bring with me and pack for a day of ski mountaineering um, and shooting photos here on the south coast. It's not gonna be too much of like a gear review, kind of how to use certain tools video, but more of just like, hey, here's what I bring with me, um, and here's some of the reasons that I kind of like make the decisions that I do around kind of the gear that I bring on a typical day. All right, we'll uh, jump in. All right, let's talk the bag itself. So besides being my favorite color, um, this is kind of my go-to uh, all-around bag. It's probably the bag I use the most in a winter season. So this is the Patagonia Descensionist 40. Um, really good all-around pack. There's a 32 liter version of this as well if you're looking for something a little bit smaller. When I'm kind of jamming camera gear, glacier travel gear, and my typical kind of ski gear, um, it is kind of just nice to have a little bit extra room. So I tend to opt for just 40 liter packs in general, uh, carry a little bit more um, out there. So. Burley 420 denier face fabric, really, really weather resistant, which I really like, especially out here. You know, we could get rain, we could get snow, we could get bluebird, so it's nice to have something that, uh, you know, is, is pretty weather resistant. Um, I really like the roll top on here because I can actually fit a helmet inside on top of all that other gear that I talked about. Um, but you do have the option of putting that on the outside in a helmet holder as well. Just personal preference, I like having kind of just everything inside the pack super clean. Um, you know, with this one, it's great for skiers or riders. So you do kind of have the option of vertical board carry. You can A-frame carry skis, diagonal carry. Um, you know, so you have quite a few options with the compression straps um, as well, kind of like doubling as those snowboard carry straps. Side zip, which I find is really important. If a pack doesn't have back zip, I definitely love having side zip. So you're just not having to dig through the whole pack every time you're looking for something or, you know, pulling out a lens or something like that. Um, you get a really nice kind of like pocket on the hip belt here, which I really like. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and then here, you know, that's on both hip belt pockets actually. Um, you get a little gear loop. So just really, really versatile when you're traveling in the mountains, super durable. Um, and then I really like, you know, this back. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the pack itself. And then from there, we'll kind of get into, uh, you know, that the Abbey tool pocket and, and then into the bag itself. Okay, so taking a look at, uh, you know, the Abbey tool pocket, um, you know, and typically I want to keep this just like probe and shovel, uh, you know, keep it really clean. I don't want anything in the way if I'm grabbing this stuff. Often I will have an ice axe in there as well because it does fit really nicely. And then in the case for kind of the objective we just recently did, we brought some ascent plates. Um, and because I had kind of camera gear, glacier gear, stuff like that in here, um, you know, I kind of have the ascent plates in here as well, but normally I try to keep that a little bit cleaner. So we'll kind of just start. So uh, one thing that I really like is that there is a little kind of like almost little pocket here, which will fit the tip of your ice axe. So it kind of just keeps it um, in place and you don't have that sharp bit moving around. So I'll pull that out first. Um, so what I have in here is the Petzl Gully, which is kind of one of my favorite axes. Um, you know, it's 45 centimeters long. I opt for the hammer version. There is an ads as well, um, but just in case we needed to throw in a piton or something like that for, for an anchor while we're out there. Um, and then the trig rest is, is really nice if you do ever actually have to use this for, you know, a little bit of, of climbing. Um, nice to have that option and just super comfortable uh, in the hand. So yeah, that's the, that's the Gully, which I really, really like using. Then kind of the other option from Petzl that is a really great kind of like ski mountaineering axe uh, is the Ride, um, you know, which is also 45 centimeters, doesn't have that trig rest, um, and then uses a stainless pick. Um, so it is actually a little bit lighter. So if you're really kind of like counting the grams, uh, you know, the, the, this is a really great option. Okay, so typical Abbey gear in here. So I've got a 320 centimeter, G3 probe, uh, aluminum. I don't know if 320 is always necessary. Um, you know, we do have a pretty deep snowpack tip typically here on the coast. So um, I've always gravitated towards longer probes rather than shorter, um, kind of personal preference. Um, you know, I think there's lots of great probes that are a little shorter out there. This is aluminum, it's a little heavier, uh, but again, I definitely like enjoy 
uh, you know, kind of the durability that I've gotten out of this probe. I've had it for a number of years. And yeah, kind of one of those things I always like kind of testing a few times a season, even though I don't use it that often. It's like maybe when we're doing our, you know, kind of start of the season, uh, you know, kind of like avalanche rescue kind of practice and, and uh, you know, maybe kind of like hunting for the edge of a cornice at some ski lines. Um, it is one of those things that would, you know, really suck if you kind of go to put it together when you need it um, and you find that, you know, maybe actually some of these wires tend to break after uh, years of abuse or, or something like that. So kind of a good one to always kind of check. That is a good working shape. Okay, what else I have in here? I've got my little shovel. So here I've got the smaller version of the G3 shovel. I think it's called the Spade Tech. I don't know, that might be the bigger one. I use both. Um, you know, typically I'll, I'll, I'll kind of bring this guy out there with me. Um, totally personal preference. There's lots of awesome shovels out there. I don't think we need to go too much in depth. Um, and then kind of last but not least in here, I've got, um, you know, kind of one of my favorite little tools for, for kind of climbing and skiing, maybe steeper lines, definitely approaching obviously, uh, is the billy goat plates. So, you know, some of you might be familiar with these and, and maybe you're kind of like, what the heck is this thing? Um, but uh, yeah, this is by a company called Billy Goat Tech. There are kind of other versions out there on the market, but you know, it's essentially like, imagine like a mini snowshoe that fits in between your ski boot and, and your crampons. Um, and I kind of think I have one set up here. So, that's kind of what it looks like fully set up kind of with the kit cramp on the bottom uh, plate in between. Um, so you're getting full use of like your full cramp on, you got your front points uh, and then points on the bottom. So it's still tons of really great traction, but then you're getting like amazing flotation if you're kind of wallowing up, uh, you know, a steep line that's gonna have like, you know, ideally lots of deep fresh snow, <laughs> you know, um, and just, yeah, really, really helps with, with not punching through on like you would on a typical boot pack. So, uh, you know, one of those tools that, you know, it's gonna add a little bit of weight to the pack, um, but kind of a game changer if you are climbing, you know, kind of a steeper terrain and, in really soft snow I mean, it just makes it way more efficient and um, if you are the only one that gets these you gotta have to convince all your buddies to do it too because um, it makes a big difference so um, um, yeah kind of set up on the Dynafit Radical Pro which is kind of one of my favorite boots I've ever used just fits really well um, and then the Petzl Leopard full aluminum crampon, which I'll talk a little bit more once I kind of dig it out of the pack, but kind of one of my favorites for uh, ski mountaineering where I'm kind of strictly sticking to snow. Um, and then, you know, potentially would go with like a hybrid version that has a steel front point, uh, the Irvis hybrid. Uh, if I know I'm gonna maybe be scrambling around some rock or some harder ice or something like that. But yeah, just a really killer setup. Really love those Billy Goat plates, they're awesome. All right, let's dig into kind of the main body of the bag. I'll kind of just work my way, uh, you know, from the top down. Um, so with that roll top, you do get quite a bit of extra room, which I really, really like. Um, you know, as you can see, out of that 40 liters, you're definitely getting a ton of space, which is awesome. Uh, typically right at the top, I'll have my helmet, kind of just the easiest place to pack it. Um, I use the Petzl Meteor, like most often I would say. Um, you know, it's a great balance of weight versus durability, ventilation, um, you know, I use it for climbing mountaineering, ski mountaineering, uh, and ski touring. So it is actually the first CE certified helmet for ski touring, uh, but it doesn't meet, uh, you know, the, I think it's an EN like 1077 standard for alpine skiing. So different certification there. Um, but you know, for, for ski touring, ski mountaineering objectives, it's a really, really great one. So, um, you know, it does have kind of an oversized uh, strap on the back, so that'll keep goggle strap or headlamp on. Headlamp clips, great venting, um, you know, and then it does have, a really easy to adjust suspension system, uh, you know, kind of like you'd see with like a bike helmet or something like that. And the thing that I love about that is that it does tuck away flat into the helmet. Um, so it's not kind of catching on your, when you're kind of shoving it in and out of your bag. So yeah, that's kind of one of my um, go-to helmets. Then usually stuffed inside the helmet in there just to protect it, I'll have my balaclava, um, I think some spy goggles, Purple is a bit of a theme. Um, so that kind of sits in there on the top of my pack. Um, and then it kind of varies on how I'll stuff things. So, you know, I try not to keep too much heavy stuff at the top of the pack, but when you're kind of filling your pack with, um, you know, ropes, uh, that type of gear, zoom lenses, that kind of thing, it, it tends to add up. And sometimes it's tough to just keep that, that weight in the lower center. So, you know, I use, let's see here, what do we got? Um, 
You see, I didn't drink all my water that day, but I tend to just use, you got a few, you know, one liter soft, soft flasks lying around. Uh, I just find they pack really nicely. Um, and usually if I need to insulate them, if it's really cold, um, I'll throw them inside of kind of like whatever puffy jacket that I pack in the pack. But I like the fact that the, the pack throughout the day as I drink my water actually gets a little bit smaller, um, which is kind of nice. Let's check out what else we got in here. So for camera gear, uh, you know, kind of one of my favorite things to talk about. I'm actually shooting with the camera I normally shoot with, so it's on the tripod, but um, you know, day to day, um, I, I shoot with like a Nikon mirrorless system and I'll carry that in uh, this great little kind of top loading camera bag from Hyperlite. Um, you know, so this is super light, very water resistant. It has a light padding and this will fit uh, my mirrorless camera with like a 24 to 70 zoom lens, which would be like, <clears throat> excuse me, my kind of like typical go-to setup. Um, and yeah, I mean, this will basically live on the outside of my bag. I clip it to my harness hip belt uh, and my backpack strap kind of at the bottom and kind of just kind of climb and ski with that all day. And I'll just clip two Petzl Ange carabiners um, to clip that to my pack. And it doesn't really move around too much. It feels pretty solid there. And the thing that I like about using full-size carabiners is if I ever get into a pinch and we need an extra couple of beaners, I can always pull these off, keep the camera in the bag. So it's kind of a, just a nice way to, to have a few spares around. But yeah, I really love this system. Uh, it's just really, really simple. And I find Unless I'm going out on like a dedicated shooting day and all we're doing is kind of, I'm sitting there and I'm shooting skiers. Um, if I'm actually kind of like moving, moving with the friends that I'm skiing with and, and trying to be really efficient, having that pack, uh, this little camera bag rather, easily accessible on the outside of the pack, just that grab and go shooting as you're moving throughout the day, uh, you know, it's kind of my favorite way to, to shoot photos. So um, yeah, that's that one. And then next up I would have, uh, you know, typically I would bring like a 70 to 200 zoom lens. Um, you know, it's kind of just 24 to 70, 70 to 200, just covers like so much ground uh, in terms of what you can shoot. This is, I think called the Navin by F-Stop, which is like a great like top loading uh, bag. I can actually fit the 70 to 200 and my body in here. And right now I just have kind of like the big zoom lens in there. And again, this one I can clip to the outside of my pack if I want to, not very often that I would do that. Um, and then this one does actually kind of like roll down. So if you did want to just get one kind of camera bag to do it all, and you're not going to carry a bunch of lenses, this is actually a pretty good option. Fairly weather resistant, uh, super burly, uh, and kind of like one of my favorite little camera bags. All right, let's see what other treasures we can find in here. Oh, my lunch. Uh, you know, again, didn't eat all my lunch this day. Um, a little bit of a theme with me. I should probably eat and drink more while I'm skiing, but that. so uh, I think we'll start getting into some clothing here. So, you know, typically I'll bring kind of like two puffy layers with me. Usually I'll have like a vest or something like that, something a little bit heavier, and then I've got like my ski shell um, and what I would use for that. So um, in here, Another thing that's purple uh, is we've got the Patagonia Das Light, which I think is kind of one of the best insulating layers that, that I have ever used in the mountains, you know, uh, let alone not just for ski touring, but uh, kind of just in general. It seems to come with me kind of 12 months a year, depending on what I'm doing. So uh, it uses plumophil insulation, which is, um, you know, a very, very light synthetic insulation. It's very comparable in weight and performance to down. Um, so highly compressible, uh, you know, great rebound, very, very warm for the weight and, and very water repellent, which is a thing that I really, really appreciate about the DAS light. Um, it does pack in to its little left hand pocket, but because it's a piece that I tend to use, you know, on and off throughout the day, um, you know, kind of my favorite way is I kind of just fold it in half, just roll it up into the hood, and it kind of tucks into like a pretty nice little small package in the pack and, and I don't have to stuff it in and out of the pocket all day. Um, but that's kind of probably my go-to. Um, always in the bag throughout the winter and definitely in the summer as well. Um, super versatile, really light, definitely a favorite. Also the purple doesn't hurt. What else do I have in here? So then, you know, kind of the other thing that I really like bringing with me, you'll see this is actually stuffed into its pocket, is uh, a Patagonia Nano Puff Vest. So 
I find the vest is a little bit of an unsung hero when it comes to insulating layers. I know we all love kind of like throwing the, the big puffy jacket on and just feeling super cozy. Um, sometimes it can be a little bit of overkill, I find, just depending on what situation you're in. So I find the vest is just a really good way to get your core warm. Uh, you can still move in it. You're still really mobile, uh, you know, still, um, you know, fairly breathable, obviously, compared to a full jacket. But, you know, it's kind of just something that I like having in the bag as an additional layer. Maybe if I'm not cold enough to throw on, kind of the hooded puffy, this is an easy one to throw, uh, you know, under the shelf. I don't know if I'm gonna hit a descent or something like that, or even maybe if we're looking at like a really snowy uh, kind of boot pack that's gonna take a while, uh, you know, nice to stay a little bit warmer, knowing that you can still kind of like climb and dig through the snow and stuff like that. So um, yeah, with the Nano Puff again, using, uh, you know, Primo Loft in here, um, so really good warmth for the weight, good compressibility, um, and then you know really good wind resistance here as well. So if I am just kind of like skinning with this on, on like a windy, really cold day, uh, it's gonna cut the breeze down and, and keep me quite warm. So, and we're making it happen. Okay, so kind of next up is probably like, you know, besides puffy jackets and, and camera gear, one of my other just like favorite things in skiing, um, which would be gloves. And I tend to bring a lot of gloves with me, you know, especially if we're talking, you know, specifically, these ski objectives where you're actually gonna be climbing and skiing, um, you know, and you're probably gonna be spending like a fair amount of time with your hands in this dome, especially if you're doing like a boot pack that's like fairly deep or fairly steep, you know? Um, if it's a little more mellow and you're using your ski poles, like maybe not as much. So typically I'll bring two kind of like warmer gloves or like descent gloves, like shell gloves, and two like skinning gloves. So something a little lighter, a little more dexterity. Um, just one gets wet, I just really like swapping out to a dry pair, especially if I am gonna be, you know, if we're digging pits or trying to dig out a cornice, um, you know, or kind of like wallowing up a deep boot pack. It's just really nice to be able to have that kind of like warm, dry pair of gloves in reserve. So let's see, let's see what we can dig out here. So, you know, for kind of the, the bigger gloves, Kind of these would be my, my two typical go-tos. So, you know, for a bigger, a little bit warmer glove from Hestra, um, this is the Fault Guide Glove, which is, a, you know, just a, a glove that I, I just go to again and again, just super comfortable, um, really warm. So we've got full leather there, out seams, great dexterity for like a full leather glove like that, although it kind of like looks like, you know, almost like a work glove, um, which, it's as durable as a lot of work gloves that I've skied with. Um, you know, you do get that really nice kind of soft suppleness that, uh, you know, I think people specifically love with Hestra. Um, a short cuff here, which, you know, you can run that over the cuff of your jacket. I tend to, you know, stuff it on the inside. I like it underneath. Um, and it's a short enough cuff that you can do that with. You're not fighting with like a really long gauntlet. Um, and then that uses a removable, uh, wool liner, which I really love. So super, super warm, super comfortable. Um, and especially on multi-day trips or even just single days here, I love being able to pull the liner out and dry everything at home just a little bit more efficiently than like a fixed liner. So that's, yeah, the fault guide. Okay, cool. And then, you know, the other one that I've been using a lot this season that I've been pretty psyched on is called the Sarek Eco Queer, which is, um, you know, that Eco Queer is basically like a, a leather uh, you know, manufacturing process that is kind of chrome free, um, which is awesome. So, you know, a little more environmentally friendly. Um, and this is a shorter gauntlet glove. So I can tuck that underneath my jacket really, really easily. Still has a good Velcro cinch um, with neoprene on the cuffs, which is really good for insulating those veins in your wrists and keeping your fingers nice and warm. Again, I just love the dexterity here. Um, Synthetic on the back of hand, um, you know, so you get that nice kind of like feel when you're actually flexing your fingers. And I would typically have that as kind of like my second pair, uh, you know, and might climb in, in one pair of these and then do the descent in the other pair. So that's kind of the, the downhill, the warmer gloves. Again, that's a wool and fleece liner in there, removable, um, so super warm, easy to care for, quick dry. Now let's find the gloves I would use for climbing or the up track. Okay, so a couple of things here. Uh, definitely a fan favorite around the office here and with a, with a lot of our, our kind of ski pals, uh, which is the Ergo Grip Active from Hestra. Um, use these on the up track a lot for how thin and how good the dexterity is. They're actually, you know, fairly warm, which is awesome. Um, and this 
Yeah, it's one of my favorite gloves ever. So you can see with the finger construction here, that's what you know they would call ergo grip, which is a you know a patented technology, and that gives you great dexterity. So whether I'm using an ice axe, ski poles, uh, you know, just you know you barely feel any material in between whatever you're grabbing uh, in your gloves, which is awesome. Reinforced on the trigger here, uh, great neoprene and Velcro cuff, really comfortable synthetic back of hand. Um, these ones are lined kind of just with like a poly brushed polyester, um, and they do make a wool terry version of these, which will have a wool terry lining. Um, and those would be a little bit warmer. Uh, so depending on if, you know, the ergo grip is like good, but you want a little bit warmer. Uh, and then the, these do have gore infinium on the back of hand. So you do get that really nice kind of like weather and wind resistant there. So yeah, I use these every single day that I ski. Big fan of those. Another favorite um, is the Windstopper Tracker. This is a five finger. Um, you know, there's some other options there as well. Um, just a really, really light, fully synthetic glove. So another one I really like for the Uptrack. Does have a slight brush lining on the inside. So nice and cozy. No Velcro on the cuff here, but nice neoprene cuff. Um, and you know, almost no seams in the palm, which is really nice. So no kind of like chafing points or anything like that. So again, just a great Uptrack glove. Uh, nice to have as my kind of like second pair when I want to slip on something, uh, you know, light and comfortable. Um, so that's four pairs of gloves. Typically, you know, if, it, if we're in like really cold weather, I might bring like a bigger kind of like full gauntlet, you know, like the heli or something like that. Um, but I'd say for, for most days we have here on the coast where we're not dipping into those like negative 20s very often, it, it happens a little bit. That's kind of the, the typical quiver for me, just, um, you know, kind of been really happy with that setup through the season. Okay, let's see what else we, uh, we have in here. Uh, we'll start getting into some little zippered pouches. So, um, I kind of use a few of these pouches just depending on what I'm organized. They're from a, a, a company, small company called Ultralight Sacks. They make all, all manner of stuff sacks and zippered pouches. And you know, it adds a little bit of weight to the bag, but it's kind of nice for me to keep organized a little bit. Sometimes I would just shove everything in my bag and every time you try and grab one thing, you're dumping you know, a dozen things out of your bag. So just a nice way to, to keep organized, a little bit of a weight penalty, but as you can tell with all the stuff that I'm carrying on a typical day, um, you know, weight is, is kind of the least of my concerns. So um, yeah, so in this little pouch, this is where I would carry kind of just like a few of what I would consider essentials, but stuff I might not be grabbing all the time. So, you know, one is I have a headlamp in here. Um, and, you know, with Petzl, there, there's a, you know, obviously a total variety of headlamps, which is awesome. But kind of the one I, I go back to over and over again um, is the Actic Core. Um, you know, so at 600 lumens um, for the size of this, I find it's just a really nice balance between size and weight and actually having something super bright. You know, if you are doing that end of the day exit when you're super tired and you're going through tight trees or the alder or whatever it happens to be, um, I do like having something that's just a little bit brighter. You know, you could go with some of the lighter, uh, smaller, more compact lights, um, but for me, this is a nice compromise between something like, you know, the Now or the Swift, you know, all the way down to the E light, this kind of sits right in between. So yeah, definitely kind of a favorite there. Um, Obviously we want to have some communication out there and I'd say the majority of our kind of like, you know, ski crew um, is skiing with radios, um, you know, and this is really nice for us if we're in steeper terrain, we want to be able to communicate. So let's say somebody's doing a ski cut or they're the first person that drops into the line. Um, it's nice to just have constant communication. It's been, okay, the next person could go down. I'm in a safe spot or, you know, kind of just, um, you know, constant communication, I think it's just super important out there. So, you know, this is a little Baofeng radio. Um, you know, they're, they're pretty small and pretty light. Um, you know, I think some people have had experiences with these or maybe they don't la last that long, you know, as let's say like an ICOM or something like that, kind of the, the industry standard. Uh, but I've been super happy with these. You know, I've had it for a few years and I definitely don't take as good a care of it as I should, um, but it's just a really nice light, small option for just communicating with your group and, and as well, if you need to communicate in an emergency, it's a really nice option. Then from there, um, you know, emergency communication is key in the backcountry, especially if we are kind of, you know, in a, in a ski environment or a ski mountaineering environment if something goes wrong. Um, Zolio, always have one with me. You know, I'd say 99.999% of the time. This is, you know, basically for me to tell my partner that I might be home a little bit later than anticipated or something like that, um, which is great for that. It's like kind of like ease of communication with your friends and your loved ones, um, as well as just a really bomb proof device. It's something that, you know, it's, it's quite lightweight. Um, very, very durable. There's no screen. There's not a lot of buttons. So I definitely like feel happy with this knowing that it's just never going to fail in my bag. And I have that, 
you know, emergency backup if I ever do need it. So the Zolio, just a great little device. We'll put a link, um, you know, in the description of this video to a few awesome videos that, um, you know, Dave Narona, a Zolio ambassador has done about Zolio and, and definitely like, yeah, if you have any questions about this device, uh, hit us up in the comments and, and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, pair of sunglasses in that pouch as well. So, uh, you know, one of my favorites uh, with Sunski here is the tree line. Um, you know, for one, you know, I feel like we don't often need like a true kind of like glacier glass out there, but I do like having a little bit of extra coverage. So with their Alpine series, um, you know, having those really nice removable side shields, which give you, you know, that great extra bit of coverage. Um, fully polarized, uh, you know, recycled content, great Enviro story here, just really love this brand. And uh, yeah, the tree line, which is this shape, is, is kind of one of my favorites, um, as well as I, I'm often using the Terra out there, but just love that, that Alpine category. A Little bit extra coverage, they look great. They're super comfy, super light. Um, um, so yeah, I kind of mentioned briefly the, the crampons that I'm using most often, which would be, um, you know, the Petzl Leopard. And then, you know, quite often the Irvis Hybrid as well, but you know, with the ski objectives, it's because we're most often, at, you know, steep or hard snow, um, and you're not often on, on hard ice or, or rock, you know, depending on what you're doing. So I find like full aluminum is fine for that. If I'm looking for maximum durability and I know I'm gonna be doing a little scrambling, maybe, you know, there is gonna be some hard ice encountered, um, I will go with something like the Irvis Hybrid just with that steel front point. I know I just get that little bit of extra oomph and, and durability out of it. But yeah, I've been really psyched on the Leopards here. So the Leopard is a full aluminum crampon. It's super, super light. Um, you've got kind of the HM PE stringers here, so really, really durable. Uh, you know, and then for me, just the how compact these are um, is just incredible. I mean, you can almost fit that in like the thigh pocket of your ski pants, not that you want to, uh, but really, really compact, super lightweight for snow, steep snow, boot packing, um, just awesome to have, you know. If you can believe it, we're actually getting close to the end of what's in this backpack, um, you know, so. Congratulations if you've made it this far, much appreciated. Um, so, you know, kind of what's left for me in this bag would be kind of, uh, you know, rope, glacier travel gear, harness, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I mean, typically, um, everything would kind of live in just one stuff sack for me, kind of at the bottom of the pack, just not pulling it out that often throughout the day. Um, but, you know, in this case, um, you know, there's potential we might be splitting up ropes between the group and divvying up group gear. So I've got kind of like harness, Belay device, backup, kind of personal stuff in one sack, and then rope uh, in the other sack. So we can kind of just see what's what's in these. Okay, so in the big pouch, again, these great pouches from Ultralight Sets. Just love these things. Um, we've got a 30 meter Petzl Rad line. Um, you know, just one of my favorite pieces of kit. Um, and, you know, I find myself bringing a rope into the back of the tree more than ever, um, just with how versatile and lightweight these are. So, I mean, this is a hyperstatic six mil rope. Um, glacier travel, repelling. Um, a breadth of techniques you can use with these from kind of like very typical like glacier travel into some of these more advanced techniques, um, you know, and just an awesome, very, very lightweight, versatile piece of kit. It's 22 grams a meter. Um, you know, this uses like an HMPE core and then like a mix of like polyester nylon and HMPE for the sheath, which gives it this great textured feel. Um, if you've ever repelled on a really skinny rope, like a six mil rope, it feels like, you know, a little sporty compared to like repelling on a typical climbing rope. So having that textured sheath, I find just gives you a little bit more bite, a uh, little more confidence when you're actually repelling with it. And as well, you know, it allows it to be used with those tooth devices like the T-block, micro traction, nano traction uh, that we'll talk about in a second. So uh, there is a 60 meter version of this. Often we find, uh, you know, having two thirties and being able to split those up is really nice and kind of just divvying it up between the group. These are middle marked um, and horribly coiled uh, from me, as you can tell, just because it's it's been shoved in and out of a stuff sack so many times. Um, but yeah, just an awesome piece of kit. Love having that. And then here, all kind of like typical, kind of like glacier rescue stuff. So I've got a double length sling here, um, ultra light screw, which I really love, just super light, but you know, incredibly versatile and, and does a great job for what you need it to do. I've got 
my favorite locker, which is the Petzl SMD. Um, you know, small D carabiner, um, super lightweight. Does actually have a little hole here that you can actually match up with a T-block. Um, you can also do that with the nano traction. Um, so you can actually tie them together um, with a two mil cord so that you're not gonna drop something like the T-block. So kind of a nice little feature there. And then in here, I actually have two uh, devices. So I've got big pear-shaped carabiner, the attache, definitely another favorite beaner of mine. And then we've got two devices. So we've got the micro traction and then the nano traction. So you've got a little bit of a, a point of difference between these two. So one, obviously the nano is quite a bit smaller. Um, it's 53 grams versus 85 grams on the micro traction. Um, the kind of the difference between the micro traction is you can actually lock the teeth out of the way and just use this as a simple pulley. Um, whereas the Nano, it's progress capture only, you know, so you're moving one direction, you don't have the ability to just use this as a regular pulley, but it is so light. Um, and typical kind of use with these, um, you know, it's eight to 11 mil ropes on the micro, um, and then it's seven to 11 on the Nano, but because of the construction of the rad line, that's what allows you to be able to use like a six mil rope with these devices. So, uh, you know, essential piece of Glacier Rescue Kit. So that's kind of the, the ropes bag and then in the little pouch here for kind of like my personal gear I'll have uh, let's see here uh, another SMD with my Reverso, kind of my preferred belay device. Um, and then often if I am repelling on something, you know, like as thin as a six mil, um, or even, you know, sometimes like seven or eight mil, I can throw an extra locker in here. And I kind of like, you know, the little bit of extra friction, especially if you're repelling with skis and a heavy pack and stuff like that. Um, great repel and belay device. Um, I do have uh, a little repel backup with a hollow block there. And then I have the Petzl Fly, which is kind of my favorite ski touring harness. Um, one is, you know, it's very lightweight, so you can strip the foam out of this very, very easily. Let me demonstrate. Um, so that's taking the foam out, just as easy as that. Um, so it's 100 grams without the foam, uh, and I believe 130 grams uh, with the foam. So, you know, very, very lightweight. Um, super compact, you know, you can kind of, comes with like a very tiny pouch, although I keep it in this bigger one. Um, so you can get that down to essentially nothing. And the thing that I really like about the fly is that it just moves really, really well, um, you know, as you're moving. So whether you're boot packing or climbing or actually just skinning in it, let's say across a glacier, I just find I, I barely feel that this harness is on, which is awesome. Um, I tend to keep the padding in it. I just find it a little bit more comfortable, um, although not a huge issue in the winter, you know, when you're actually wearing lots of layers. And I do find that kind of unique, um, you know, kind of adjustment features. So, um, you know, the way that you actually, you know, close the leg loops in the waist, it's very easy to use with gloves on, which I really like. I find sometimes the typical nylon buckles um, can be a little bit harder to use if you have big gloves on. And often if it's cold and windy, I just don't want to take my gloves off um, when I'm actually kind of like, you know, messing around with my harness and, and stuff like that. So you actually do get two full-size gear loops on here, which I really like. Last but not least, I have my skin wax and scraper, which I didn't know were in there and I've been looking for for weeks. So nice to know that that's in there. And, and that's kind of the typical you know setup. I don't think there's anything else in there. Uh, I mean last but not least I'll talk about you know kind of just quickly skis and, and kind of the outerwear that I use and, and we can kind of just leave it there. Cool. Thanks. Okay one thing I actually almost forgot to chat about is just like some of the little group gear things that we tend to kind of just chat about at the car in the morning and, and we'll kind of decide how we divvy that up. So you know one would be like a small first aid kit um, you know so we'll kind of build out each of these little individual first aid kits and we'll try and have one or two of these in the group it's usually painkillers, just some wound care, maybe some hand warmers and a lighter and stuff like that. Um, and that will kind of get split up between the group. Not always the same person carrying that. Um, and then same thing, a little repair kit. Um, you know, so we'll divvy that up. Not everybody needs to bring one. Um, and then, you know, same thing with the first aid is we would have like a bigger first aid kit either at the snowmobile or at the car or something like that. And, you know, a little, repair kit would be like pliers, maybe some epoxy, some bailing wire, gore patches, um, you know, kind of stuff like that. I mean, I don't even really know what's in here. Pocket knife, lighter, um, definitely, you know, I always like bringing a spare powder basket um, and then usually a few ski straps uh, as well. And it's nice if everybody has a few of those. We might split up, you know, something like a few cordlets between the group, depending on if we feel like we're gonna need to, you know, um, build repel anchors, stuff like that, um, but not everybody needs to bring that as well. So just kind of trying to divvy up some of that weight. And then typically we'll have, although I don't seem to have take that's our emergency bivvy, but I think I lent it out. Okay, last but not least, I'll kind of just briefly talk, you know, kind of my outerwear and, and ski setup. So, you know, I tend to gravitate to 
two different types of outerwear from Patagonia. Um, so uh, we use the Pow Slayer jacket and bibs quite often. Uh, Gore Pro shell, just really burly. Um, kind of just something I can really rely upon. I don't really need to think about it. It's gonna keep the elements out. It's gonna stand up to kind of day to day of use, season after season after season. Um, and one of my favorite kits out there. The other one I've been using quite a bit over the last two to three seasons and that I really love as well uh, is the Storm Stride kit. So that's a specific backcountry touring kit, um, you know, skiing or riding that Patagonia developed. It's a three layer material, a little bit softer than the Pals layer. Um, you know, you don't get that same, um, you know, kind of feel with the material. Um, you get a little bit of stretch with it, um, and it's just a beautiful kind of almost buttery soft, like three layer material. Um, and that one is, you know, hits Patagonia's H2 No Performance Standard, um, which um, we'll discuss in a different video. Uh, no bibs on that one, but just a, a, a waist pant, which I really love. Great mobility, great fit. Um, and you know, really love both of those kits for touring. If I was gonna pick one that I was gonna do, maybe a little bit of resort skiing with and touring, uh, I do love the Pouslayer kit for that. Um, and you know, you get some great touring features as well um, with the Storm Stride. Uh, we'll do another video kind of discussing some of the differences between those. So. Um, Something I've added to the quiver this year that I really love um, is these fulcrum poles. Um, you know, it seems to be a lot of our ski pals are using these this year. Uh, great company out of Washington. Um, really love the full length grip that's on these. Um, you know, especially just because a lot of times if you're, you know, touring on steep side hills, it's just so nice to have, be able to grip almost halfway down the pole and still be on foam, which I just find keeps my hands a lot warmer um, as well. Not having that big traditional grip, it's really easy to plunge the ski pole in backwards if you do need to use it for a little bit of purchase depending on what you're doing. So yeah, and then typically, uh, depending on what I'm doing, the, the setup I've been using the most this season uh, is an Armada JJ Ultralight. Um, you know, the shortest they do is a 185 in this one, but for kind of our pow skiing on the coast, it's been just a total game changer. This is one of the most fun skis I've ever used. Um, you know, full twin, super light, and then I'm using an ATK uh, Raider 12 on these, which is a great tech binding. Um, you know, they do a ton of different bindings, but I've been super happy with these. Um, you know, I've skied kind of like steep stuff, deep, jumping off stuff, and, and this setup has felt really bomber and, and really reliable, just really enjoying it. Um, and then if we're talking bigger days where weight's an issue, where I'm gonna be seeing kind of steeper, you know, more exposed terrain, and I'm gonna be jumping around a little bit more. Um, uh, this is a newer setup for me, but these Blizzard Zero G in the 95 underfoot um, have been a really awesome kind of like lightweight, steep skiing setup. So super, super light. Uh, you know, I mean, these are a 171. So going from a 185 to a 171 is, is kind of funny sometimes. Takes a little while to get used to. Um, and this is the plume, I think called the Owazo 8 on here. So just a super light binding. But again, I find those CNC toe pieces uh, super bomber. Um, and yeah, I've been really stoked on this. It's kind of just the, the go-to lightweight set. Um, that's about it for the what's in my bag video. It's a bit of a long one. So yeah, thanks for, thanks for sticking through it. Uh, any questions at all? hit us in the comments. Uh, we'll post a few links to some of the stuff that I've talked about. And uh, yeah, if there's any piece of kit um, or something like that, that you want you know, a more in-depth video on, definitely let us know and, and we'd be happy to jump on it. Definitely from any of the brands that we work with, just let us know in the comments. So yeah, thanks for sticking around. Have a good rest of the winter. Stay safe out there.